Welcome to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. We recommend that you do the 30 days of yoga before attempting this sequence. Lynn is in the white, showing the classic poses. Leo in the turquoise, showing the modified versions. Adho Mukha Virasana. Keep the buttocks back on the heels. Use a foam pad if necessary. Look up and come into Adho Mukha Shwanasana, dog head down. Keep your abdomen back, feet, feet hip width apart, straight arms, straight legs. Keep the breath fine and even. Look up. Come into Uddhva Mukha Svanasana, dog head up. You can either tuck the toes under or have the feet flat to the floor. Keep the thighs th firm. Come back into Adha Mukha Svanasana. Hit your thighs back. Step or jump the feet for Uttanasana a forward bending action. Those who are more supple, take your hands to the floor. Otherwise, you can use some yoga bricks and have the feet hip width apart. Those working in the classic version, feet together. Hands come back, either sides of your feet. If you're working with bricks, you can use them at whatever height is appropriate for you. Keep your legs strong and straight, your abdomen back towards the spine. Come into Utkatasana, sacrum in, weight back into the heels. Come up into Udvahastasana in Tadasana, ribs back, abdomen back. Release the arms down, we're coming into the lateral poses now. We're coming for Vrukshasana tree pose. If balance is an issue, have your back to the wall. You may need a belt if it's difficult to keep the foot into the opposite thigh. So take your right leg up and extend into your fingers. Press your right foot into your left inner thigh. If you're using your belt, then just take the left arm up. Release and come to the other side. Rotate the, the top of the left leg to bring that foot up into the opposite groin. Move your left knee back and your left groin forwards. Resist the foot with the inner right thigh. Keep your arms straight, extend into your fingertips. Release the arms down. Come back into Tadasana mountain pose. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Step or jump the feet wide. Arms out, both legs straight. Keep your spine in line. Turn your feet to the right. Press into the outer edge of your back foot as you hinge into the action. For those with more mobility, you can take the hand to the floor, but don't use the hand to the floor and lose the alignment in your spine. Keep the chest facing forwards, the arms extending up. Come back up, turn the feet to the front, and now go to your left. The right foot turns in 15 degrees, the whole of the left leg and foot to 90 degrees. Lengthen, extend and come into the action. 
draw up through the kneecap of your front leg. Rotate your left ribs forwards and your right ribs back. Press firmly into the outer edge of your back foot. Fine inhalation and exhalation. Press into the outer edge of that back foot to lift yourselves out of the pose, come into Tadasana. We're going to come into Paj Vakanasana now, extended side angle pose. So again, step or jump the feet wide. Turning the feet to the right, left foot in 15 degrees, the whole of the right leg and foot out to 90 degrees. For those who are working in the classic action, when you bend your leg, you can take your hand down to the floor. For those working in the modified version, the right arm can rest on your right thigh. If you're working in the full action, the left arm comes over the ear. If there's shoulder restriction, just keep the hand up as you did do in the previous pose, Trikonasana. Come back up. Turn the feet to face forwards and now turn to your left. Keep the chest facing forwards, the arms in line with your shoulders as you descend into a right angle bend on your front leg. Either take your lower arm to the thigh or take the lower arm hand to the floor. Keep descending in that left sitting bone towards the floor. If your knee overshoots your ankle, then make more space by scooting the back foot back. Come up, turn the feet to face forwards, step or jump the feet together and stand in Tadasana. We're coming now for Prasarita Padottanasana, wide legged forward bend. You can have two bricks if your hamstrings are a little tight. Take the feet wide. Make sure that the feet are in line with one another. Lift up the frontal pelvic bones. Move the abdomen towards the spine. Hinge forwards. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders using the bricks if necessary. For those who are coming into the full action, take the heel of the hands in line with the heel of the foot. Keep the elbows in line with your shoulders, bend at the elbows and take the head to the floor or to a support if required. Heel toe the feet together if necessary to come up out of this or lift up out of the pose and step or jump the feet back into the centre. We're going to come back into this action, but with the hands either in Paschimottanasana, reverse prayer position, or with the arms folded behind the back. Feet wide. Make sure that the outer edges of the feet line up with the outer edges of the mat, that the abdomen is strong as you extend forwards. If it's difficult to release the head to the floor, you can have a pile of foam pads or a brick underneath your head. Those who've got the hands in Paschimottanasana, work the hands up your back, press the little finger into the spine, pressing the heel of the hands together. Use your legs to lift yourselves out of the poses and then either heel toe in or step or jump the feet back to the centre. Stand in Tadasana. We're coming for Warrior 2, Virabhadrasana 2 now. Step or jump the feet wide. Extend into your fingertips, strong arms, strong legs. Turn your feet to the right. Keep the chest facing forwards, keep the spine vertical as you bend your front leg into a square. Look along the ring finger of your right hand. Come up, turn the feet to face forwards and go to the other side. Back foot turns in slightly. 
bend to a, front, to a right angle on that left leg now. Keep the arms strong. Extend out into the fingertips. Come back to the center and step or jump the feet back into the center. We're going to come for warrior one, Virabhadrasana one now. You may need to have a foam pad at either end of your mat. Step or jump the feet wide. You can either take the arms up into Uddhva Hastasana or keep the arms out in line with your shoulders. Turn the back foot in well. If you're using the foam pad, the foot can come up onto that foam pad. Turn the whole of the front leg and foot and also the hips to face the narrow end of your mat before you bend into a right angle. Keep the frontal hip bones lifting, keep the chest lifting. Descend with your front leg, buttock towards the floor, come up, turn the feet to face forwards and we're going to go straight to the other side. So if you're working with the arms out in line with your shoulders, extend into your fingertips and draw the upper arm bones back into the body. If you're working with your arms up by your ears, bring the upper arms close to your ears and stretch strongly into your fingertips. As you lift out of the pelvic region, move the abdomen back. Turn the feet to face forwards and step or jump the feet back to the center. For those coming into the classic version now, you're coming into Padangustasana. If you're a little stiffer, you can use bricks for your Uttanasana. Take the feet hip width apart, hands on the frontal hips extend forwards. Either take your hands to your bricks, or if your hands reach comfortably to the floor, take the two first fingers and the thumb around your big toe. Pull on that big toe with the resistance from the fingers and extend the chest downwards. Otherwise, work in your Uttanasana, pressing your hands into the bricks, moving your abdomen to the spine and keeping the legs strong, straight, upright. Don't be impatient if the full pose isn't coming just yet. Keep working in your Uttanasana. Release out of the action. Coming up. We're going to come again into Uttanasana. Those who need to, you can bend your legs to walk your hands forwards into Adamukashwanasana, dog head down. Release your head, let it rest. Press back with the very tops of the thighs. Make sure that your heels aren't swinging in. Release down onto all fours and come back into Adamukha Virasana. Use supports if you need them. Rest the head, let the breathing steady and settle. We're coming into seated action now. Dandasana, staff or stick pose, then coming for a bar of adjustment twist. You can see here that Lynn's showing the action of the feet. So swing your legs to the left. You can sit on a couple of foam pads if this is a difficult action for you. Keep the thighs straight. Keep the pelvis level. Lift up with your left hand. Take it to the outside of your right thigh and take your right hand behind either onto the floor or onto a brick. Keep moving down with your left groin as you turn to the right. Release and come to the other side. So swing the legs now to the right in order to turn to the left. If the hips are not level, sit higher. Extend your right up, arm up by your right ear. Take it down to the outer left thigh. Take the left hand behind you. Press the fingertips down either into the floor or into your brick. Pull on that right thigh 
with your, sorry, left thigh with your right hand to get the turn. Release, stretch the legs out in front of you. We're going to come again into this Baravajasana twisting action, but this time it's with the catching of the arms, so you may need to have a belt. If you're using the belt, place it around your upper left arm. Stretch the left arm up, take it down to the outer right thigh. Swing your right hand and arm behind you to catch either your upper arm or your belt. Use the traction to twist. Releasing and coming to the other side. So swing your legs to the right now. Put the belt on the right arm if required. Extend the right arm up. Take the right hand to the outer left thigh. Swing the left hand behind you to catch the belt or the arm. Keep the right groin down as you turn. Keep your knees on the floor. Release and stretch the legs forwards into Dandasana. We're coming into a prone position now for Salabhasana Locust Pose. So lie on your front. If you're working in the classic action, take the arms behind as you can see with Lynn here, with the palms facing up. Otherwise, you can work like Leo is doing, with the arms stretched in front. Inhale, and on an exhalation, lift your chest, lift your legs, lift your arms. Extend into your inner heels. Breathe. Release down. We're coming now into a Makarasana action, crocodile pose. Interlock the fingers behind the head and lift your chest as much as possible. Releasing down. We're coming into Bekasana frog pose now. You're either working with both hands to the feet or just one foot at a time. If you're working with both hands, clasp the fronts of the feet, turn the hands, take the elbows to the ceiling and push your feet towards the floor either side of your hips. If you're working with one leg at a time, just take one foot, bring it down to the outer foot, outer hip, and then take the other foot and again bring it down to the outer hip. It's a strong action. Release down. We're coming into Danirasana next. But just rest for a few moments on your front. Bend your knees and catch the fronts of your ankles. This is Dhanurasana Bow Pose. You can either have the toes pointing towards the head or you can work as Leo is doing, not catching the feet, but just lifting the thighs, lifting the chest and taking the arms behind. Release down and rest. We're coming now into Jatara Parivatanasana. This is a twisting action. You need to be lying on your back. You may need to have a couple of foam pads or a bolster to support your legs as you go. Bring the arms out in line with your shoulders with the palms facing the ceiling. 
lying on your back and bring your knees into your chest. Keep your knees and inner ankles fixed together as you take your legs out to the right. So if you're taking your legs to your right and you're using supports, you need to have your supports on the right side. Particularly press down with your left shoulder. Bring the legs back to the center. If you're using supports, move them to the other side. Keep the abdomen weighted down. As you take the legs across the body, you're moving your knees up towards your elbow. Breathe. So draw the knees up towards the inner left elbow. Keep the abdomen rotating away from your knees. Come back to the center and release the feet down. We're coming now into a prone Shavasana. You may need to use a blanket. Lie on your tummy. Fold your arms. And rest your head. Onto your hands or onto your blanket. Let the toes be together the heels come apart. Completely release the body and allow the breath to flow. Fine inhalation, fine exhalation through the nostrils. Namaste. Thank you for joining us today.